Hi, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I'm going to be doing the LGBTQIA plus YouTuber tag. The first question is, how do you identify? If you want to put it simply, I'm queer. Queer in a lot of different ways. If you wanted to look more specifically, I consider myself non-binary, genderqueer, and then my sexuality is a little bit more up in the air. I previously identified as demisexual, um, and pansexual, but I've been having to work out some feelings because I've sort of come to the conclusion that I probably just don't like men, um, so I don't really know where that leaves me, so I like the word queer. Question number two is what are some of your favorite LGBT plus books and authors? That is a tall order because I think most of what I read at this point is LGBT. Um, so I've got several things that I'm going to recommend. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about any one of them just because I have several of them. I think most of these, not all of them, but a decent chunk of them I've mentioned at some point in some of my videos. Um, if you're interested in knowing about any specific one, let me know and I can maybe do a review video or something. But I'll start out with YA. Um, this first one is a recent favorite and that is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver, uh, which is about a non-binary person. Um, there's a lot of stuff about family, a little bit about love. I absolutely love this book. And then a favorite that I've had for a while is David Levithan. Um, Two Boys Kissing I think is probably my favorite book that he's written, but I've liked most of the other stuff that I've read. I think I've mostly read um, kind of what would be his older stuff at this point. The only one that I did not like was Boy Meets Boy, which was his first novel. Um, but yeah, pretty much everything else that he's written has been really good that I've read. Next, I've got a couple of graphic novels and manga. First, we have Kase-san and Morning Glories, which is just kind of pure lesbian fluff. I loved it. And then we have On a Sunbeam, which um, is just super fantastic. It's a fantasy graphic novel, and there's a whole lot that's going on. There are sort of two timelines that happen throughout it. Um, there are so many great characters. Everybody in this is queer. Um, so many FF relationships and a non-binary character. I adore this book so much. Next, poetry. Um, Denez Smith is absolutely fantastic. This book totally blew me away. Um, Don't Call Us Dead. The next two poets that I have on my list I've uh, been reading or following for a while. The first is Andrea Gibson, who I've talked about a number of times on this channel. I absolutely adore them. And then we have um, Alok Faid Menon, and I think this is their only book, Feminine Public, but you can also find other um, pieces that they've written online or performed. Uh, they used to be a part of a group called Dark Matter, and that's actually where I first saw them as performing in that group. Um, so I highly recommend that. And finally, we have a few nonfiction books. The first one is a recent favorite. Um, it's the best book that I've read all year at this point, and that is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. Chances are, if you've been around Book Internet at all, you've seen some stuff about it, please read it. It is interesting, just kind of literary-wise, um, and it's a fantastic story, an important topic, etc, etc. Next, we have another memoir, A Year Without a Name, by Cyrus Grace Dunham. Uh, they're a non-binary person, and they talk about kind of some of their experience figuring themselves out. Um, there's some neat stuff with time in here. I really love this book. I've talked about it in a couple of other videos. Highly recommend. And then Sorted by Jackson Bird. Again, this is another memoir. It is a really good and engaging memoir and really good if you aren't super familiar with trans related things because he puts in a whole lot of different informational bits um, throughout his story. And the final nonfiction piece that I have is Making History by Eric Marcus. In general, the projects that Eric Marcus has done and is doing is really wonderful. Um, he's an oral historian, and he goes through and has talked to many different people who've been a part of the gay movement. You can actually listen to those oral histories online. Um, and that's just an absolutely important project. Question number three is, how often do you talk about LGBT plus books on your channel? And what videos do you recommend people starting with if they're looking for LGBT content? I would say at this point, all of my videos probably have LGBT books in them. At the very least, most of them do. I don't think that every single video that I'll ever make is only LGBT, but I do think that the vast majority of the videos that I put out will mention LGBT content in some capacity. 
so far is what videos you could start with. If you're interested in fiction, I would say that you could start with the If You Have Read The Symptoms of Being Human video. Um, even if you haven't read Symptoms of Being Human, I still have a lot of recommendations on there that you would like if you're interested in LGBT books. Um, Symptoms of Being Human is not an own voices novel, but the rest of the books that I mention in that are. Another good option if you're interested in fiction would be um, my reading gay manga for the first time video. If you're more interested in nonfiction, I would say that you could start with the topical book recs video that I have on trans and non-binary books. Question number four, who are your favorite LGBT YouTubers? This is a little bit difficult because I think that most of the YouTubers that I watch regularly are LGBT. Not every single booktuber that I watch, but the vast majority of them, um, just because that's sort of how I found booktube to begin with. But a few in particular that I can think of, um, Bowties and Books um, is really great, and so is Problems of a Book Nerd. Sage Reads has a lot of trans and non-binary recommendations that are really good. Brianna's Library has a lot of great stuff on nonfiction, um, and Ode to Books is a channel that I've really enjoyed watching recently. Question number five is, when was the first time you encountered an LGBT character in fiction? And this was actually a really hard question. I had to sit and think for a while. And honestly, I think that the first time that I ever saw a gay character in fiction was through fan fiction. And that might sort of sound weird at first, but honestly, it's not super uncommon. Um, with some of the research that I did on LGBT people, most of the people that I interviewed were in fandoms in some capacity. And for a lot of them, fan fiction was one of the first times that they saw LGBT people, um, or certainly the first time that they saw LGBT people represented in a positive way. So that's probably where I saw it first, um, kind of not including movies that might have something in passing that either went over my head or it just didn't kind of stick with me. So far as regular books go, one could say The Great Gatsby was it. There's no way Nick is heterosexual. But since that's not technically canon, I'm going to have to go with the House of Night series. Um, the first book is marked. She has a gay best friend, Damien. It's pretty stereotypically gay pretty gay BFF. I don't think that this is a book that I would recommend like at all unless you're already super into YA vampire series. Um, I read this in high school but I don't think that I could try to really reread all of these at this point um, just because the writing style is very stereotypically teenagery. But who knows maybe nostalgia would be enough to pull me through. Um, I don't know, but I'm probably not going to test that anytime soon. The final question, question number five. Anything else you want to add and who do you tag? I wanted to add a few books that are on my TBR that I think that other people should look into as well. I think it's really important that we read LGBT content um, from diverse LGBT people. I don't really have a whole lot of LGBT general fiction. Um, I have a couple of classics, um, like A Picture for Dorian Gray um, and The Well of Loneliness, so I'm trying to find more kind of like adult fiction and other genres that have LGBT representation, LGBT authors. So one of the books on my TBR is Nevada by Imogene Binney, and this is the story of a punk trans woman. I'm pretty excited to read that. Another book that's on my TBR is a poetry book, How to Cure a Ghost by Farhia Roysin. This book is by a queer Muslim person, um, so this isn't a perspective that I see a whole lot of, so I would recommend checking that out. The next few books that I have are nonfiction, but I think are super important. The first one is Transgender History by Susan Stryker. I actually have read chapters of this, but I'm looking forward to reading it from cover to cover. This is trans history, which is super important, but it's trans history by a trans person. And that piece is so incredibly important. That's one of the reasons why I love um, Eric Marcus's oral history project. Hearing history from people who have lived it is really important all by itself, but also having diverse people actually piecing together the history even if they didn't live it is super important. Um, because when you have privileged people constructing the story of what history is, you're going to get a very different picture. So it's important that we have kind of people building the histories of the groups that they're a part of. I've got two kind of classic essay books that I think are good to look into. Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde 
Again, I've read pieces from this, but I haven't read the whole thing. Audrey Lord is essential reading, so please read this. Next we have Time on Two Crosses, The Collected Ri Writings of Bayard Rustin. Bayard Rustin was um, a gay man who did a whole lot of organizing for Martin Luther King Jr. He's not typically recognized, but he did a whole lot, um, both in civil rights, he was also big into the anti-war movement. He did a whole lot of neat stuff, um, so I'm really looking forward to his writings. and. He's definitely a figure that you should look into. And the next two that I have are both memoirs by queer people of color. The first is When They Call You a Terrorist, a Black Lives Matter memoir by Patrice Con Cullors and Asha Bendel. Um, this is a memoir about um, one of the founders of the Black Lives Matter movement. So this is really important recent history that you should definitely look at. And the final one is How We Fight for Our Lives by Saeed Jones, who is a queer person of color who lived in the South, and this is sort of about that. So join me in picking up some of these books or other books by other LGBT people, um, especially LGBT people who are also a part of other marginalized groups. I'm not necessarily going to tag anyone because tagging people is scary, but if you want to do this tag, consider this me tagging you. So that's all for this video today. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye. Kitty. This is Tonks. She came to visit. But she hates being held like a baby. But she's a good baby.